One thing that is really interesting about the Owl House is how it manages to drop in just a little bit of lore in each episode that gives us hints about what is to come. Earlier in the series, we began to hear about the Emperor of the Boiling Isles, and thanks to the teaser, we now know that a big confrontation with the Emperor is coming in the final two episodes of the season. One thing that keeps getting brought up in the second half of the season are the heads of the covens, with a few small details about them and perhaps some foreshadowing of where they will go in terms of story. I'm Deep Cut, this is Cartoon Universe, and if I sound funny, it's because I have a cold. Today, we're going to talk about the coven leaders, what their significance will be in Season 2, and how they will fit into the overall timeline of the show. Please keep in mind that all of these topics are purely speculative at this point. There's a lot of information that can be thrown at us in any given episode that devalues anything said here, but let's jump into it. In the most recent episode, Wing It Like Witches, we get a small bit of Boiling Isles history in the form of an actual history class that the kids aren't paying all that much attention to. During this class, the teacher explains that the Emperor appointed a witch to the head of each coven over 50 years ago, so presumably less than 60 years ago. This raises a question, were the covens in existence before, but without heads, or with different heads from a previous ruler, or did they simply not exist up until that point? Due to the way the story is going in relation to the Emperor being the root of all evil in the Boiling Isle society, I'm going to assume, for the sake of theorizing, that the coven system only existed loosely before this, and that it is a relatively new concept in the history of the Boiling Isles. When you look at the Boiling Isles, everything is a little bit old-fashioned. While this is often the case with fantasy stories because of the aesthetic, it can also be used to hint at the actual development in a society. In the Avatar, for instance, much of the world is modeled after an old-fashioned Chinese aesthetic, but this isn't purely visual. They are on the verge of similar and sometimes greater technological breakthroughs than our own world, which can be seen in the sequel series Korra, which uses the early New York aesthetic to show how far the society has progressed as a whole. The Owl House is likely using its old-school look for similar reasons, to show that their society as a whole, and the way it is now, hasn't been around all that long, with remnants of the more ancient world being all around them, such as seen at the kneecap of the Boiling Isles. The Emperor likely saw that there was no order in the Witch's world when he was a young man, and created the Coven system when he came to power in order to limit other people's power, and by doing so, limiting the amount of chaos any individual would cause and make everyone more dependent on one another for goods and services, since they couldn't provide the majority of them themselves the way that someone like Ida can. This raises a few questions, however, such as where Ida and her sister fit in this timeline. Ida is literally falling apart. Her head rolls off its neck, her hand can be discarded at will, and the addition of her gray hair gives the impression that she is very advanced in her age, at least in her 50s. This would muddy the timeline, as that would mean that, at best, the coven system was established right before she was born, and the idea of using multiple forms of magic wouldn't be so radical. There is evidence that suggests she is much younger, however. First and foremost, her sister. Lilith is Ida's younger sister, but they were so close in age that they shared the same goal of being in the Emperor's Coven as adults, and even played on the same grudge B team. It seems that they were at best just three years apart, not such a big age difference that Ida would have gone entirely grey and Lilith would still look youthful. Ida is also seen drinking from a mug that says 30 and flirty in one episode. While this may be something stolen from the human world or a joke from her actual 30s that she still keeps around, it may indicate that she is much younger than she looks. With Lilith being nearly the same age in mine, it instead seems likely that Ida's advanced age is actually a facet of the curse, which explains why she herself is worried about someone just a few years younger than her seeing her as an old woman. It is artificial. I'm going to operate under the assumption that Ida is no more than 39 at the moment, which would mean the coven system was established at least 11 years before she was born, and at most about 20 years before she was born, making it a cultural norm that people would not understand rebelling against at this point. This likely means that the Emperor and many of the heads of the covens are somewhere near their 70s or possibly older, which explains why he sent Lilith on a quest to find a flower that would give him eternal youth. He's reaching the end of his life, and when you take off his mask, would likely see an old man, which can be hinted at in the title of the season finale, Young Blood and Old Souls, which may also be a reference to Ida being an old soul and her relationship to Luz, who is the young blood. 
With only two episodes left this season, it's not likely that we're going to see the heads of the coven quite yet, but rather I think they are setting them up now because they will be the primary focus of season two, the way that the build up to the Emperor has been the primary focus of season one. The last two episodes seem to be a two-parter. The penultimate episode is about Lou sneaking off during a field trip to the Emperor's palace, where it's likely that she will have some big confrontation with Lilith, who in turn is having some scary scenes with the Emperor himself. And the final episode's description is left very vague, implying that describing anything from it will spoil what is going to happen in the previous episode that builds into it. I think the finale will end with the Emperor being exposed and thrown out in some way, but that won't destroy the Boiling Isles coven system and free everyone. Instead, the leaders of each coven are going to step up to continue supporting its existence, and that will be explored more in Season 2. But how exactly will Luz go about taking down the coven system? I think we've already seen the roots of it in the episode The First Day, and how Luz managed to bring some freedom of choice to the School of Hexide itself. For those who missed the episode or don't remember, it involves Luce being unable to make a choice for which track she wants to be on because all of them are so appealing to her. In the end, Luce and her friends are the only ones able to stop a threat, which highlights the ultimate theme of the show, that everyone having their own power not just makes them independent, but more able to help each other in times of need as well. And the principal caves and lets them all learn multiple tracks of magic, with Luce learning all of them. I think Season 2 will focus on Luce meeting each head of each coven and slowly winning them over to her side, similar to how she won over the principal at Hexide during the episode, The First Day. When you look at their coven murals, they all seem rather ominous and spooky, and I'm sure each will present real challenges for Luce and her friends, but underneath it all, they will have a human side, by which I mean they have emotional aspects that we as humans have, even though they're witches. Imagine how many of them were actually sad to lose access to their other forms of magic when they created the coven system, and how it may have actually divided them from people they love, or even each other. There are nine of the most powerful witches in the entire Boiling Isles at the head of these covens, and the great and powerful people of history are often very close with one another. It wouldn't surprise me to find out that many of these leaders were best friends during their school days, and were tragically torn apart by the division that the coven system causes. Seeing how a human like Luz can befriend a boy in the illusionist track and become buddies with a girl in the plant track, maybe date a girl from the abomination track, and be mentored by an outlaw with no coven at all might make them realize that putting aside the coven system will create a more loving system that brings people together in ways that they didn't expect, creating their own covens based off of ideas and love for one another instead of what makes them different and exclusionary, like what type of magic you excel at. But that is just my theory for now. What do you guys think? Did I extrapolate way too much from two lines of dialogue, or is this a possible outcome for Season 2? Tell me your thoughts in a comment down below, and I will see you next time.